Good morning, y'all. Um, I'm going to share with y'all a dream, but I first want to kind of share one scripture, um, maybe more in this. Um, Isaiah 9, 2 through 6. It's about the government resting upon his shoulder. That would be the name of Jesus. So read it, guys. There's a lot to it. Um, but here's the dream. Okay. I wanted to wait, and I've been waiting. <clears throat> this is the 12th day. <clears throat> I had the dream 12 days ago. I really didn't want to do it on Father's Day, so I'll wait until this morning. <clears throat> but it's relevant to, to today. I'm not going to name names because I don't want the sensationalism and all the political <clears throat> hoopla that goes with it. <clears throat> In this dream... I saw this great ocean, and it was dark, black. The water were black. And I saw off in the horizon, the sky was blood red, but yet there was light coming from behind it, and you could see, so it was almost like day, but yet red. But it was dark, the ocean was dark. So there was light in the background, blood red, in a dark ocean and then I saw a ship going across this black ocean off in the distance and it looked a lot like the Titanic guys honestly it was an old steamer ship and the lights were on it's black and white big big ship <clears throat> and as it passed by off in the distance I could see across the back you know how they have the names it said America And then off in the distance, in the ocean, in the dark depths, I saw a submarine. And the submarine was fairly close to the ship, fired a torpedo. And when it hit the ship, the ship nose dived and sunk. And then I saw who was firing the torpedo. I saw their face. You know who it was. I'm not going to sensationalize it, but it was somebody high in office in the political realm of America. Guys, this is not a battle of this. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. But. They looked at a stopwatch after they fired the torpedo. And it said 12.05. And after the dream, when I woke up, I asked the Lord, I was kind of questioning him about it. So what's the 12.05 mean? It was 12 days and five minutes. I said, well, what was a torpedo? It's a bill, a law they're gonna try to pass. So guys, it's time to weep and pray between the porch and the altar. I've been saying that for long, for months now. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. It has to do with the 5 a.m. prayer. Time to get up. Because guys, I, there's too, many, too much to this dreams and messages and stuff that's going on. <laughs> but... the dishonesty the way people talk to each other the hatred, anger, viciousness divisiveness that's going on and it's it, this is what the Lord told me he said well okay but it's prevalent in our government Look at what the mayor of New York said about the police department a while back, and then suddenly all hell broke loose. Well, I'm sure there was a little bit more to do it than that. There was probably some animosity and some other things going on, probably. <laughs> but right now, <clears throat> everybody's on a power grab and a trip. <clears throat> Guys, where was the church? One virus took us, 
took out the church. You can, you know, this is not a popular, going to be a popular message. I'm okay with that. Because I'm obedient to God. 95, 99%, where were they? When all this happened, hardly a peep from Pentecostal, charismatic to name it, to denominations name it. Why? Because we've been disconnected, guys, from the power. Didn't have it. But I'm preaching to the choir. Some of y'all, yes. But the vast majority, no. Because we weren't praying and seeking Him and listening. That's where He wants us to be. That's why the 5 a.m. prayer is so important. So that all these witches and warlocks, these crazy demonic people, I don't care if they enlarge. Joel's army's coming forth, guys. But where was the church? Supposed church. God allowed it to happen. He wiped it out. Why? Because the houses were built upon sand. Honestly, guys, and now everybody's, you know, a few of them are popping back, some of them are popping back up and kind of, you know, they just regrouped and restacked and a lot of this, man, there's so much stuff out there, guys. Who killed Jesus, the religion? Look at history, World War II ended and most of the war criminals were hidden by a church, the church. Look at your history, guys. Took the Mossad years to find them, but they were. But God allowed this to happen because the houses were built upon sand and he wants it built upon the rock and he can't pour new wine into old wineskins. They were leaking guys, they were broken, tore up. I'm not saying don't go back to church. I'm not saying don't reassemble. I'm not saying that the church is the problem. It was our relationship of the disconnect that we were disconnected from him and listening. And he wants to build us right, guys. Now with inferior product, a lot of this song business and stuff, and I love songs. I've got some of my favorite songs, but a lot of it's been lullabies, just lulling on us into sleep like they did in the, like it happened in the garden. We asked the disciples to pray, and there was something very important coming up, which was his death, burial, and resurrection, and they fell asleep. The church has been asleep, guys. We've been disconnected from the power. You say what you want to say. Guys, get to the reality of it. Where was the church during all this? One virus took us out. One shot. Boom, bam. But it's like, oh, I'm not going to take the mark of the beast and everything else, you know, and I'm going to stand and blah, blah, blah. Did we? Some of us did. I'm not saying this to say that I'm something great because I know I could na name other people too, but I'm trying to stay away from the sensationalism of it too. And some, some are not even just common Christian people, but it's Gideon's army, Gideon's army, Joel's army. Didn't, man. Lord told me to, to start this helps ministry right around the time of the coronavirus, just before it. Didn't want to, did anyhow, because I was obedient. Then it hit. Man, I was six, seven days a week, guys. Out there 12 hours a day. No mask. <clears throat> Out there, what are they gonna do? You know, arrest me, throw me in jail. Lord told me, he said, we thought that the church had a power trip. He said, wait till we see what the world's doing. And that's what they're doing right now. Everything from councilmen to mayors to governors to people in Congress, even the president, guys. <clears throat> it's gotten really twisted up. That's why that scripture is out there that I put on the messages. Isaiah 27 and 1, I was in prayer. It was almost a year ago. And I asked the Lord what was going on. And he said, it's twisted. It's twisted. There's a famine coming for the lack of the word, guys. It's time to get back to the Bible.
it's time to weep and pray. He wants to talk to us, guys, but he wants us to listen. That's very important. And that's why 5 a.m. is important, because there's not a lot going on, and you don't have to turn on your TV, the Internet, nothing. Your cell phone, your kids are probably asleep, your wife or your husband, whichever, or maybe you're not married. But there's not all the distractions, and you can start the day fresh and anew. And you should pray all the time. Some of us, you know, have to work. If you have to work nights or whatever, you know, the 5 a.m. may not work. But as often as you can, as a nation, because we're in trouble, guy. This is where the rubber meets the road. What are we going to do? Everybody's like barking, obey the laws of the land. Where's the Daniels? Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego's. Where's God's people? Where's Gideon's army? Most of them were, had their face stuck in the water. The few that he picked were drinking, but they were looking up and around because they knew there was danger around. They knew that there was something going on. They knew they had to be aware of what was going on. We've been asleep, God. We've been disconnected. We've been in this lullaby land. I'm sorry. Me too. I'm not, you know... So there's way more to it, and I've had other dreams, and I'm almost to the point where I could finish what the Lord told me to do. The coronavirus kind of did throw me for a loop a little bit because everything that I had planned, the Lord had different plans, but it, he'd been very faithful in everything he told me that he was going to do. He's done already, and then some. And one day I'll share that with you soon. It's pretty amazing, really, because through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus through it all. Guys, it's time to weep and pray and cry as a nation and for the world. Because the enemy, the devil himself, it is a good, and God versus evil. The devil, it's a battle lines are being drawn, guys. So what are we going to do? Time to get some Holy Ghost backbone. All of us. So there's time-wise, this weekend probably not, but by the 4th of July, because there's some other stuff and some messages and some books that, that the Lord I've already wrote to, and it long story, but I'll get you copies for free. You can just email me at jesusisaliveinamerica at gmail.com because the messages are, there's too much, and that's what he told me to do, write it down on tablets actually which I got a tablet now and I'm you know technically I'm not a geek I'm illiterate okay just in that area but that's okay <clears throat> but guys there's there was another dream I had about Egypt and a famine and man I've had dreams about the storms coming and so we love you guys um I kind of want to just throw that one out there and let you guys meditate on it a little bit, think about it, and realize something's brewing and coming up. And we're in a battle, and it's time for Joel's army to rise and shine. So much to it. Just watch, pick some of my messages and watch them, but I'm not the only one saying this, guys. So it's not... I'm just trying to encourage you to pray and to seek him. I am going to end with this. This is going to be a message about vessels of honor and dishonor, but this is a vessel piece. Three vessels in my house. I had a plastic tote out in the garage. Pink. I would have picked red or green, but my wife picked pink. <clears throat> a red gas can in my shed and a plastic milk jug in my refrigerator. Well, they all serve a purpose. Milk's in my refrigerator. I'm not gonna put the gas can in my refrigerator. I'm not gonna put the milk out in my storage tub outside. Pool goes in there to keep it fresh and clean so I don't have to buy a new one every year. You know, plastic pool for the grandkids, nothing, you know, $25, but still. You know, we keep it cleaned and fresh and they all serve a purpose. I'm not gonna put my 
pool and my storage t container and refrigerator is not going to fit. And I, like I said, pour milk in my gas, in my lawnmower. They're all necessary. And they're all vessels and they're all the same. They're all made out of plastic, but they all serve a different purpose. I like my grass cut. I like a cool glass of milk. It helps settle my stomach some sometimes early in the morning or late at night. And I like my pool kept up so my grandkids can enjoy it. But I can't, they're not interchangeable, really. But they're all vessels and they all serve a purpose. So I'm going to end with this. All this, the world twisted it up really bad. The church has been doing it for a long time now. Really, we just didn't see it because we were disconnected because we were in this lullaby land and in this surreal world. <laughs> This non-essential garbage, we're all essential to the kingdom of God. I don't care if you're the doorkeeper and you, you know, prison tattooed up and been in prison, or you're the senior pastor and there was a million people in your church. It's the same to God. Same to God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Read it and weep, guys. Not just pray, but read it and weep too. The Word, Matthew 20. 20, 21, and 22. We didn't reject. We didn't. God didn't reject us. We rejected God. Because we've been disconnected. Power's been there. We just haven't been using it. We haven't been connected. It's time to reconnect. That's what I'm saying about the weep and pray and get back, get back to the basics. So we can all. You want to be that city that's set upon a hill? I, that's what I'm saying. I didn't say don't gather. I didn't say don't have a church. I didn't say any of that. I'm saying have it, do it right according to the will of God and His purpose and His grace and His glory because then we can be that city set upon a hill. We'll be that fire, that forest fire. But if, you're, if your embers are, if all you are is ember and you're burnt out and you're full of sin, And then you enter in, it's not going to be a city set up on a hill, guys. Why do you think the world doesn't really care about the church? What have we shown them? I oh, know, not a popular message. That'll, 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 I'm going to end with this. Okay, this is one message, and I haven't got to all of them. It's too long to get into today, but. That message, oh, that'll preach, that'll preach, this won't. In prayer, it was a couple years ago, honestly. And the Lord said, it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. Well, that's going to sit real well with most of these big, puffy churches. And ego people and money-grabbing stuff. Crazy stuff that isn't even from, isn't even in the Bible. And even from God, you didn't get it in prayer. You didn't get it from anywhere but yourself. It's an idol of self. Ouch. But he's redirecting. God's GPS. God promised his son. God provided his son. His name is Jesus. So, anyhow, there's way more, too many, too long, but I just wanted to get this one out there, but I'm really going to be back up and running real strongly after the 1st of, the, of July because of some of the messages that the Lord has given me about the 4th of July, honestly, and the things that are coming. Sounds like a storm out there. Thank you, Jesus, because my lawn needed the rain. Um, so, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Um, just really tune tune in, check them out. You know, you got some comments. That's the other, that last thing I am going to end with is, and I've been going to different channels and websites and people and stuff. It's like, man, a lot of these, some of these big name preachers, a lot of different people are turning off their comments. What are they hiding from? I don't care hate mail, the F-bomb, been dropped, whatever. But I want to hear about Jesus. 
This stuff is kind of like water off a of duck's back, you know. It really is. But where are they running from? It's time, time for the truth to come out, guys. We've got a mess on our hands that only God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, His Word. We're going to see us through. That's why it seems to be a lamp under our feet, a light under our path. His Word won't go void. I'm going to end with this. I have a friend that has, has a prison ministry, and she was, of course, she has some stuff going on in a different, different country, and it's, and it's a Spanish-speaking country. And in the Spanish speaking Bible, in John says the word, you know, was the beginning was the word. But it's a verb in the Spanish Bible. It's an action. I don't know, um, you know, some of you fact checkers can dig into that a little bit, but it's it Get the word of God void so it need to send out what it was accomplished to do what he wanted it to accomplish. And it's time to get back to the basics, guys. Prayer is going to get us there. All of us. Every knee will bow. Why? Because he wants to walk with us in the cool of the day, so are we going to get... Are we going to reconnect or are we going to stay disconnected? Love you guys. Um, talk to you soon.